I'd like to start off uh, by saying what an honor it is to be able to speak with you today in the company of the governor, the mayor, Dr. Burton, Colonel Haller, as well as Sheriff Glick. It's an extreme honor to be here uh, and sharing some stories with you. I'm not going to share additional statistics. I think you guys have gotten a lot of those already. Um, just share a, a little story and some information with you. I've been with the Cheyenne Police Department for 16 years now. Before that, I spent two years as a dispatcher for the Wyoming Highway Patrol. That's where I kind of got my first taste and love for traffic, if you will, traffic enforcement. Uh, what really spurred my passion for traffic enforcement, seatbelt enforcement, and things like that was unfortunately the result of a fatal crash that happened in August of 1999, just west of uh, Cheyenne. In August of uh, 1999, there was a single vehicle crash just west of town on Interstate 80. I was in the middle of the night. I happened to be the dispatcher that was on duty that took the phone call uh, from the person that happened upon the crash. I was on the phone with a gentleman. Uh, it was very clear he was distressed. His voice was distressed. Um, I could hear Pink Floyd. Uh, most of you, I believe, uh, here are new, know who that band is. Pink Floyd was blaring in the background of the car stereo that, that had been crashed. I heard the driver of the vehicle moving around, making noises. Uh, that at the time is only a dispatcher. I could just describe his noise. Uh, but now, uh, with my experience in law enforcement, I know he was basically in the throes of death. Um, later on that night, uh, after the troopers had completed their investigations, I received the call and the dispatch center explained to me that, you know, this ultimately was a fatal crash uh, and the driver was intoxicated and also not wearing his seatbelt. The trooper then provided me with the name of this driver. Uh, the driver was a friend of mine. Uh, we had gone to school together, we were drummers together, um, so it was kind of a, a tough thing to hear from this trooper that this was somebody that I knew uh, and whose life possibly could have been saved by wearing a seatbelt in addition to not driving drunk. Prior to the end of my shift that night, I called his parents to offer my condolences uh, and just hearing the, the grief and the anguish and pain and suffering in their voices, that was enough for me to just spark that passion uh, of traffic enforcement, doing anything I possibly could as a dispatcher then, as a patrol officer, and now as a, as a sergeant, a supervisor for our traffic unit, to try and prevent other families from having to hear those same words, whether it's from law enforcement, from a coroner, from a surgeon, you know, that we couldn't save your child, we couldn't save your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, uh, your relatives, we did everything they could. But if they had been wearing their seatbelt, we likely could have saved them. So that's what began my passion for traffic enforcement. And I share with you that all the officers of the Cheyenne Police Department, um, we see it daily, as the, do the troopers and the sheriff's deputy, the results of crashes uh, involving unrestrained drivers and the injuries that result and again, the pain and anguish in those family members when we have to deliver bad news. In 2015, we had 267 injury crashes reported to the Cheyenne Police Department. And I, and I say that 267 is a big number, but that's simply the number of crashes that were reported to us, not the number of people injured in those crashes, which are usually more than one person. Uh, over the last several years, our officers have also issued hundreds of tickets for seatbelt violations. Uh, a lot of those tickets came during crash investigations, but also during proactive traffic enforcement where we observe a violator uh, and not wearing their seatbelt, committing some other infraction, make a traffic stop, uh, and, and try to educate those drivers on the importance of wearing those seatbelts and that we care about our citizens. We want them to stick around. We want them to be here. They're members of our communities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, though our, our department always uh, engages in proactive uh, enforcement of our traffic laws and seatbelt laws and things of that nature. As we move forward into the mobilization time frame, uh, we plan to increase our enforcement and enforcement efforts even more so. Uh, so keep in mind, I will send this message out to everybody. Um, our officers are going to be out there looking. They're looking for those violations. Uh, our goal is not to write tickets. We would rather not write any tickets, have everybody wearing their seatbelt. Um, but sometimes a citation being issued is, is that little wake-up call that it takes um, for people to realize the dangers of not wearing their seatbelt. Uh, so we will be out there uh, increasing our enforcement efforts uh, through the, this entire May mobilization period uh, just to show our commitment uh, to keeping the community safe, um, not only our citizens safe, but as well as all the, the folks that travel through our city and, and throughout our state to let them know that we're serious about these, uh, these issues and we want to help save lives.